Hello, Mary Me. Sorry for not posting any videos for a few weeks, but I have been visiting my mother and her internet access is not the greatest. So, uploading videos is sort of a pain. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I wanted to discuss a topic about Chaos Magic. And it's really something that a lot of people who are not Chaos themselves have asked me about. So I thought I would address it. And that is chaos magic and insanity. Because um, uh, they say, how is chaos magic? The idea that there is no hard and fast rule of reality. That um, reality is whatever you believe. How is this then different from insanity? And how does it separate out insane ideas from perfectly legit worldviews? Well, I think that to answer this, you have to look at the concept of insanity and what we call insanity. Because really, um, psychology has very little unified ideas about what insanity is. For example, in communist Russia, it was uh, common to label people who were against the regime as insane and send them to a silent. They even had a fancy name for the insanity, which slips my man mind right now, but yeah. And almost every society has their own concept about what goes under insanity. And if you look at, for example, the Norwegian description of insanity, it is holding a um, belief or worldview which are considerably different than the worldviews of those around you. That says nothing about the worldview being correct or well thought out or anything like that. It just says basically being non-conformist is insanity. So, uh, if everybody believed that the sky was purple, and you believed it was blue, then you would be insane. Of course, the Norwegian one say, it also includes that you have to have, you or those around you, have to have, prob it has to, your worldviews have to cause problems for them. Because, basically, if you just, for example, believe there are mermaids in the town beneath your house or um, behind your house, and you leave little cookies and fruit out for the mermaids, and that makes you feel blessed and it brings a bit of joy into your life, that's a peculiar idea, but it's not insanity because it harms no one. However, if you see a kid bathing in that pond and you go and shoot them because uh, um, it's for the mermaids only, then that is insanity by the Norwegian standard. But really, like, in most societies, insanity is referred to as having a belief that varies a lot from those around you. So, for example, believing that the reason why women are in pain when giving birth is because the first woman agreed to eat a forbidden fruit because she was seduced by Satan in the guise of a snake. Believing this to be the absolute truth, that is completely insane. However, believing that there are uh, that there are fairies in your garden can bring you good luck would be considered insane by many. Because it has to do with basically an idea about what the majority thinks. And of course, if you're going by that definition, that it's what the majority thinks, then we are all, ladies and gentlemen, all of us who are occultists that might any of you that might be watching this, we are all insane. Because we hold worldviews that are significantly different than the worldviews held by most. 
for me, however, I see it as slightly different. I don't believe that believing the world to be different is, I mean, is insanity. Because, like I said, I don't believe there are one single truth to reality. I believe that what you believe reality to be is how it is for you. Of course, you have to then be realistic and realize that not all people will see the world as you do. And basically, an inability to see that is one of the things that eh, makes something a mental illness instead of just having a different worldview. For example, um, if you believe that... Um, Let's go back to fairies in the garden. If you believe that fairies in the garden, that is, becomes your uh, reality, in my belief. However, not everybody will see it like that. Cat hairs in my mouth. Um, that's what happens when you kiss kittens. Anyway, if people don't come around and you can't understand how they can't see the fairies that are so clear to you, that can be a sign of mental illness, not the worldview in itself, but that you are incapable of understanding that others might not share it. For the most part, however, I see insanity or mental illness as having some sort of mental problem that is, well, a disease, a uh, disease, uh, something that is troubling to you or others. For example, I have depression and anxiety. This is a problem for me. It limits what I can do with my life. It is a trouble. It is uncomfortable. So it is a mental illness. That I believe in magic. And change between how I believe magic works, according to what hits me at that day, is not insanity because it doesn't harm me or anybody else in any way. It makes me happy. So I think that's the difference between chaos magic and insanity and also what separates having a different paradigm from being insane. Having a different paradigm means that you have a different worldview than others. However, if it's going to be a healthy way to look at it, you have to be able to realize that not everybody else will see it this way. And you also have to be able to see that it, it has to be, it has to give you something instead of taking something away. Meaning that, meaning that um, it has to give you understanding, make you happy, make your studies you make your everyday uh, world more enjoyable, make sense to you, give you something, then it is completely healthy and good. But if instead it makes you sad and scared or a bully to everybody else around you, then we might think it might be a disease. But then it's not the worldview which is the problem. It's what it does to you is the problem. So, think about it this way. If you believe that your neighbor is an alien, you are completely, utterly convinced your neighbor is an alien. If that just makes you feel lucky, and you may mean you treat your neighbor like everybody else, you just feel that the life has that little bit more spark to it. What's the problem? It doesn't hurt you at all, and especially if you are able to then see that this is a pretty peculiar idea, and not basically then act crazy on it. Then there's nothing wrong with the idea. However, if you then lie around in the neighbor's bushes and spy on them to see their spacecraft, or try to attack them, 
or run around and scream around the neighborhood. So Mrs. Johnson is an alien. Mrs. Johnson is an alien. Then chances are that's a problem. And but it's not the idea itself. It's not your uh, alternative worldview, which is the problem. It's how you act on it, which is a problem. So, yeah. Basically, a uh, chaos. Don't think that everybody else will have the same world. You, we do have our feet on the ground. Even if we, let's say, change our paradigm to... Dungeons and Dragons magic. We who? We don't expect that there will be a physical dragon outside our doors when we open it. We change our mind to incorporate that reality, to make that a reality for ourselves. But we are still able to interpret the reality around us just as it is. Because I mean, a share is still a share, a car is still a car. You just have that worldview, and worldviews then become tools. Because that's really what a paradigm is, it's a tool. It's a way to take them. Um, it's a way to... Um, Play with how you think about things to make it more fitting for what you want to accomplish. So, for example, uh, one day I might adopt a completely Wiccan paradigm and do Wiccan rituals and connect myself very much to the Wiccan ideas of how to do things. And that is very fitting for me. Another day, I might decide that the working I want to do is not fitting for Golden Dawn style uh, ritual magic, and I will change to that. Or, for example, I might use African folk magic or German folk magic one day, or a combination thereof, because I changed worldview, and the same is that Yes, a lot of chaos, myself included, do accept things from fiction into our practice. This is because, like I said, we don't believe there is an ultimate, this is what is real, this is what is not, and then as such, fiction in and of itself have the same level of reality as the reality we all live in. It's real for as long as you believe in it. And Sometimes it can be very useful, because often ideas from fiction is stronger in your mind than things from real-world mythology and so on and so forth. So that if I'm going to call up an entity for protection, I might do the ritual to Optimus Prime from uh, Transformers, because he is an idea that is stronger in my mind than a lot of real occult entities. This, however, does not mean that I expect the next car I see to transform, but it means that I am able to um, add that worldview on top of existing reality because of my belief that there is no ultimate truth. Insanity, however, is that when your worldview changes without you wanting it to. And it's often associated with a lot of anxiety, fears, and so on and so forth. And it often makes you unable to function in the world around you because you lose its grip with that. That is not what chaos magic is about. Chaos magic is about using worldviews as tools, not be ruled by them. Also, yes, there is a bit of an overlap when it comes to 
magic the occult and insanity because sometimes it is difficult to know what is what. For example, a lot of people who are into the occult do have um, psychic visions or they hear voices and so on and so forth and see it as psychic messages. While others might be insane and hear the same thing. And a lot of people who are into the occult say that, but what if the messages that um, those that are nuts here are actually psychic messages, but their minds are just not able to get that? I believe there is a quite possibility that a lot of people who are uh, who suffer from schizophrenia and so on and so forth that they actually do see things psychically. However, I also believe that there are quite a few things that happen just because the mind don't work the way it should. However, one should always be somewhat careful when one hears things others can't hear and see things others can't see. And basically fact check it. But yeah, I believe there are the mind is a fascinating thing, and I believe there are gliding. Um, there are gliding degrees when it comes to this, so that when somebody say. How are you different than somebody if you hear some hear a voice in your head that tells you messages from angels? How are you different from somebody who is suffering from schizophrenia? And I'm not so sure one is different. It's just that what I then hear doesn't cause a problem for me or others. It enriches my life instead of causing fear and problems. And of course you can't even take that as a complete test for it because the people who uh, are mediums who definitely have fears and problems with what they do but still what, when they do their th stuff people are helped. So, I mean it is very difficult to sit and say this is completely sane this is not, this is the occult, this is insanity. Because the two are somewhat entwined. But I think that the best thing to do, whatever it is with chaos magic or it is with anything within the occult, is to ask yourself, all in all, what I am experiencing and doing, is it enriching mine? other people's lives? Does it have internal consistency? Can I fact check it? Does it does it work well for me to hold these ideas? If you ask yourself questions like these and you come to the conclusion that yeah it, it works pretty well for me or even if it's a sacrifice and it's sometimes uncomfortable it does ultimately help people, help spirits, it's for the good, then I wouldn't call that insanity. But like I said, insanity and magic has always been entwined, and to know where one stops and the other begins is sometimes hard. But generally, if what you do is for the good, for your good, for others' good, and so on, it generally and doesn't hurt anyone, yourself included, it generally, to my mind, is not insanity. So yeah, that's my video. I hope you have a great day. And blessed be.